Okay, now I'm going to move up the feeder to the cluster. It's a long five foot high. As you can see, all the bees were all gone. because they're all clustered up. Around the queen cage. See? That's normal. Provided there's one queen in the cage. In the, in the shipping cage. So now, since all this is clear of bees, I've already pre-filled most of the syrup. In the feeder. So see where the cluster see where the cluster is? We want that right touching that cluster. And it won't take long for them to figure out that there's food in there. Top off the feeder. It's good to pour from this corner so you don't get the bees wet. And the syrup level will rise over there. And that's good. You're about a, less than the length of a bee away. And they'll start feeding on it. And all that comb will act like a float. And that wire keeps the sides of the feet are from shifting. And then as the cluster grows and the combs grow, you shift the feeder back. So as they grow, you move the feeder back. It's a tight fit. You could have the feeder a little bit more cut down. I like my feeders as big as possible. Because these feeders grow, usually are feeding established colonies. So I want them at maximum capacity. It'll take them a while to build all those cones. So I'm just using this flat board up right here. Mm -hmm. 